stories of innovation and success from the vibrant communities of rural Nova Scotia. This is Ignited. Hey there, welcome to Ignited the Podcast, where we celebrate innovation and rural success. I'm Wade Cleveland. I work for a rural innovation hub called Ignite, a place that brings startups and industry, youth and community together with the goal of making an impact on rural communities everywhere. Here we are at part four of our Inside the Mind of an Entrepreneur series with Michelle Hurlbert of 3D Life Inc. You may remember we told Michelle's story during season one of Ignited the Podcast, and if you've missed it, you can find it in our archives. Michelle is a mentor and coach who works primarily with women entrepreneurs and leaders, and this time we're talking about social media and your online presence, how to deal with it mentally, some pitfalls and traps you can fall into, like the false sense of perfection that's there, and how to use social media as a tool. Michelle, welcome again. Hi, it's great to be back. One of the conversations we had was primarily about relationships. This is going to be about relationships too, just not in the same way, because we're talking about social media and our relationship with that. And let's be honest, some people kind of have their relationships on social media. But as an entrepreneur, social media is an interesting thing. I'm sure we're going to cover a few things here, but... uh, I talk a lot about social media on this podcast and otherwise because we talk a lot about marketing, but this isn't about marketing. Right. Partially, I think we'll get into a little bit about the marketing side of of social media, but there's so much information out there and so many resources and, and people to tap into to talk about marketing using social media that we often forget about the flip side and what those relationships or connections that you're making as an entrepreneur online uh, really are about and how social media helps, but then also how it can hinder uh, what we're trying to do or how we're moving forward in our business. All right. Well, let's start there. Let's start about the helping because we (laughs) always try to start on the positives. We all know that social media is where it's at because that's where everyone is. People are glued to their telephones, literally, Whatever that social media platform might be, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or now X or whatever they're calling it or YouTube or TikTok or all of that, an awful lot of time, uh, a lot of people's bandwidths are taken up in social media, whether it be just ingesting the content or making the content. Yes to all of the above. We, as entrepreneurs, there's a lot of time typically spent creating content. And especially if you're a solopreneur, then that tends to be a chunk of your of your job, a chunk of your responsibility to showing up on social media, to promote, to market, to bring awareness to the business that you have and the solutions that you're providing um, to the problems that your audience has. And that in and of itself, that content creation piece, there is a lot that goes into what do I need to say? What do I want to say? How do I show up as myself through it so that people get to know, like, and trust me? But how am I talking about my business? How am I showing up with my business in a way that is helping me stand out, that is helping me be different and giving people the impression or the idea that I'm the one that they need to go to? On the other side of that, there's a lot of time spent scrolling and looking at other people's content, other people's profiles, and getting a sense of what else is out there. And if you're scrolling for, say, market research, if you're scrolling to see what some of your industry standards are, what other people in your industry are doing, saying, uh, what's working for them, maybe in terms of engagement. But it's really easy to fall into scrolling and seeing other people, particularly those who may have a similar business to you or in the same industry as you, scrolling and seeing them and then comparing. That's a trap that's very easily fallen into, especially starting out as an entrepreneur. Critical thinking skills are really important when it comes to looking at other people who are doing similar things to what you are as an entrepreneur, because sometimes we can get sucked into, for lack of a better term at the moment, sucked into what we see and not necessarily what we don't see. Because there's a lot of work that goes goes on behind the scenes 
that we don't consider. We just, our brains work and when we see an image, it takes in thousands of pieces of information that we don't even realize. And so getting caught up in that trap of, oh, well, look at them. Look, that picture is so great. And oh, they look so wonderful. And uh, they have so many likes, or they have so many people commenting, and there's lots of engagement. If we don't think about, for example, well, how long have they been in business? We don't take a step back and say, you know, who's taking this photo? How many times did it take to get that particular photo or this particular video? Perfection doesn't exist, but sometimes it's easy to think it does when other people, when it feels like other people are maybe doing it better, quote unquote, than we are. That's a trap that people generally can fall into. But as an entrepreneur, that that can be a bad one because it's a blow to your confidence, especially when you're trying very hard to get somewhere and you're traveling that way. You know, you you think, okay, my business journey is is here and look at those people and they it all comes so easily for them. And that can be a big blow to somebody's confidence. It certainly can. I have gone through this myself as a coach, a, a life and leadership coach. I've looked at other people in my industry and have seen at least from a social media perspective how well it looks like they're doing. But then when I took a step back and said, okay, well, this person's been in business for 10 years, maybe even 10 years longer than I have been. So being really careful about comparing myself to somebody who is much further along on the journey than I am was really important for me because then I also had to think, who do they have working with them? Do they have a team? You know, I'm a solopreneur. So there are questions that you can ask to keep yourself from falling into that trap, that comparison trap of I'm not doing good enough, I'm not I'm not being enough, I'm not showing up enough because social media can really pull you in and can really take up a lot of time trying to chase the algorithm and get we figure out what the because the algorithms change all the time. But in doing so, we can spend much less time doing the things that matter more. And that can take away from the actions in business that really matter most. Uh, And social media is a part of that, but it's not everything. You really hit the nail on the head with that. Social media is a trap in and of itself. It's somewhat addictive and it's, it's designed that way. Let's be honest. You end up chasing likes. You chase engagement and response. I know that you have said more than once in the series that we have done, you have to be you and you have to know who you are. And I find when it comes to social media, the only way to control it is, again, you have to use those same principles. You have to know who you are, what your goal is, and know when to say stop because social media becomes endless. 100%. It's constant. It's available at our fingertips any time of the day, all day long, all night. Like it's 24-7. You can get something new from social media, from the people you're following or the news feed that pops up. It's very easy to lose a lot of time scrolling or creating it. I love social media for the fact that there are so many platforms out there that are great for building and growing an audience and being able to attract people to you who are your people, who are your ideal clients or your ideal customers. It's a massive opportunity to build awareness for who you are and what you do. But at the same time, it's it has its downfalls. And we have to be really careful about what those are for us because it will be different for each individual. It's what are my downfalls might not be the same as yours, but being really clear on what those are for you and also being really clear on how social media, how you want social media to work for you and for your business. There's marketing people who are very experienced, but I look at it from a perspective of your business has to work for you as much as you work for it. And the same with social media. You need to decide how does it work for me and my business and how much time do I want to give it in order to build and grow my business. But it's a great tool if used consciously and effectively. Yeah. And you have to remember that it is a tool. It's a tool. It is the dog wagging its tail or is the tail wagging the dog? And sometimes with social media, there's a lot of <laughs> a lot of tails wagging a lot of dogs. Yes. 
a lot of the messaging and a lot of the marketing advice out there now is saying, find a platform, start with one. Start with one that really is where you know your audience is, where your ideal customers are. Start with one and get really good at that one. Now, I didn't start that way. And I've had a hard time myself kind of weaning off. I deactivated my TikTok account. I deactivated my Twitter account. But I, that took me a long time to let go because once you're there, you get into that mindset of, but if I leave, what will happen to the people who are following me? But there are other options. There are other places that they can find you. So my journey has been kind of up and down with social media. I've fallen into the comparison traps. I'm a self-proclaimed overachiever. I recovering, trying to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but earlier on in my journey since 2019 with my business, I looked at how much I did and how much presence I had everywhere as a measure of me being a quote unquote good business owner and a good business person. And what I've come to realize is that the simpler it can be, the more impactful it will be because you're able to focus on one platform and what that platform is all about. And then you can repurpose content. Then you can, you know, I, I still, like I said, I still have Facebook, I still have Instagram, but I use what I create for LinkedIn because that's my main platform. I use what I create there and repurpose it on my Facebook page and on my Instagram account. And Instagram I use for fun too. I'll, I'll pop in stories and just be me because people want to see that too. So I think it depends on the platform, but choosing what works best, where you know your, your ideal audience is and choosing one and really focusing in on and getting really good at that one and then you know starting another or repurposing content out to to a couple others that's been my my experience and i feel much more focused and much clearer on the content that i want to make because i'm focused mainly on one i want to tell you about our igniting women in business series at ignite providing rural women entrepreneurs an opportunity to connect learn and build their network through a series of initiatives including a speaker series gala and retreat, we hope to inspire and empower rural women in business across the province. The theme is relearning through a women's lens. The sessions offer a space for women to discuss challenges that are faced by rural women in entrepreneurship, with opportunities to learn, network and socialize. For more information on Igniting Women in Business and to sign up for our events newsletter, visit IgniteAtlantic.com. Just before we did this, I was doing some editing and I was editing the one that we did on leadership. And one of the things you said at the very end of that was, if you are trying to be perfect, you're not a leader because that way you, you become unapproachable and people become tense around you and a whole bunch of other things. But basically the idea is, is that perfection is unachievable. If you are painting yourself as a perfect leader, then the people around you are going to be scared every time they make a mistake and it's just not going to work because no one is perfect. In the same way, there's a trap in social media because people want to paint that perfect picture. Sometimes that's not necessarily the right approach because perfection not only is intimidating and untrue, it's also a little boring. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, when trying to achieve perfection or trying to be perfect on social media, and I, it comes from a belief and, and I'm not an exception. I've had this thought myself. It comes from a belief of I need to show up and look like, at least look like, I know what I'm doing. I have the experience and the authority to be doing what I'm doing, that I'm confident and I, I've got this under wraps. Like I, I've, I own this because I want people to have that impression of me so that they'll come and work with me or that they will buy what I have to offer. The opposite happens though, because when people look and see someone who looks perfect, who seems like they've got everything together and there, there are no problems, there are no issues, when they see that concept of perfection on social media, it's really hard to connect with them. And the same, as you said, with the with leadership, it's really hard to connect with 
quote unquote, perfect leaders. Those people who show up and seem like they do everything perfectly and they don't have any problems and everything's okay, they're not relatable. And so when we're trying to be a leader in our business on social media or and otherwise, perfection is, is going to create more distance as opposed to proximity. So people come to us, people like you know and want to know who you are and, and trust you because you show up as a real human being. I will admit that this is something that I personally have struggled with over the course of my time on social media because I don't like scripts, but I feel like I have to have, okay, what am I going to say? How am I going to say it? And then I, you know, I post it and then I look back and go, well, I could have said this or I I look a little too like I'm telling. I'm I'm not I'm not showing, I'm not giving you a story about what's going on. I'm just I'm telling you, I'm educating you. And this has been something that I've been reflecting on and really working on toward being more just me and real as opposed to trying to make it perfect, quote unquote. It's a real thing. It's a it's a challenge. Because again, we want people to perceive us and to know that we know our stuff, that we should be the go-to choice. And somehow we often, and again, from my own personal experience, believe that, no, I have, I have to show up in a certain way for people to believe that. And typically the opposite is true. Yeah. Be, be yourself and people go, oh, hey, I like her. Or, oh, hey, they're doing a great job over there. I'd, I'd really like to know more. It generates curiosity and inspires people to, to follow and to engage. So it's still something I'm working on. It's a journey. Honesty goes a long way. And inherently, social media can become a very dishonest place. And let's not get into a whole bunch of other things that can be dishonest, scams and things like that. that that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying in the same way that you can fall into that comparison syndrome You always try to put your best foot forward, but sometimes you're putting it so far forward that you're not being yourself. And I think the only way to connect with anybody, whether it be on social media or face-to-face, is to be honest. It's the only way that works because it's the only way that you end up comfortable in your own skin. Uh, Yes. And people, whether you're in person or whether you're online, people feel it. If you're not coming across as genuinely you as authentically you, and you're trying to fake it till you make it, quote unquote, people see through that. Like there are spidey senses. There is like an intuition that that people have that they know when you're trying to put on, and I don't know if this is a really old expression, but when you're trying to put on airs, you're just trying to show them that, yeah, I'm I'm the person, I'm the one, I, I've got this, as opposed to being you and being transparent and open and approachable and honest about the achievements that you've had, the accomplishments that you've made, the success that you've had, the transformations that you that you create and make. But then also that, you know what, the journey's not easy. Like there's a lot of stuff that comes up that challenges us and puts us back in our humbleness or so people will see through any kind of bull that you're trying to, to shovel. Yeah. The thing is, is if you fake it and succeed, you're going to be faking it for the rest of your career. And that I, I couldn't live that way. Right. That's way too much work. We mentioned imposter syndrome is in one of the earlier episodes. And that's what I think. I'm like, if I'm faking it all the time, knowing that, you know, my journey isn't maybe where I want it to be yet, but I'm faking it and, and trying to show other people that I am already there then how does that internalizes in me and that shows up in me and all the self-talk and all of the the negative things that result internally with that imposter syndrome and oh, if people, oh, gosh, if people find out if they only know who I really am or, or that, you know, I, I've only made $1,000 this month or whatever, like that's when faking it turns on us. You know, I've I've heard faking it till you make it, but I recently I've heard fake it until you become it. But I'm still not really sure on that one either. I need to dig a little deeper. But 
just being open and honest about where you are at in your journey. And yeah, you have the skills and the expertise and the authority to be doing what you're doing, but just starting out or being a couple years in, you're still a baby. You're still a baby business and and a, and a baby entrepreneur. And, and that's fine. You're just at a different part of the journey. And social media can exacerbate that impatience for being further along or wanting to be further along than you are. I think we're talking about social media and we're not talking about social media <laughs> all at the same time. Um, takes a little bit of bravery, though. Honesty requires um, a certain kind of vulnerability yes. that uh, sometimes it's not easy yeah. uh, to be honest anywhere. Uh, and social media is one of those places where people do have a tendency to eat you alive. But there's only one way you can live your life, and that's your way. Right. Which, again, is really important to knowing who you are and and developing that confidence within yourself and confidence comes from taking action confidence i can i can think in my head i'll just be confident today but that if i don't take any action toward what it is i might be fearful of or worried about or then that confidence only exists in my head when it comes time to actually show up and in person or online then that might not shine through the more action you take on social media or otherwise, the more confident you're going to become. But knowing who you are as a human being, as a leader, as a business owner, that's really the key to stepping into that confidence and taking action. There's something to be said for being open and honest and transparent on social media. And sometimes that includes vulner vulnerability, as you said. There's also a fine line as well, because oversharing can also do the opposite. So it's, again, knowing who you are and what is within your scope of what you want to share and what you don't want to share or won't share is really important to be clear on as well. Um, one of the challenges that I have been trying to figure out recently is I'm a pretty private person. I keep a lot of stuff to myself in terms of what's going on in my life. But when it comes to my business, it's much easier for me to open up, to share, to be transparent, to be open about what's going on with the business and what the business does. That doesn't always translate into people connecting with me as the voice, as the director, as the the coach within the business. And so there's a balance that I'm trying to find of how do I show up on social media and be visible as the voice of the business, but then also give insights into me and who I am. Because that's, again, a very a very fine line, especially if, if you are a private person. Does that just come with practice? Is it that simple? Practice, but again, building that awareness of what do I want to share? What am I comfortable sharing? What do I think? And not only knowing yourself, but knowing your audience, knowing your ideal customers and clients, what are they looking for? And that's really a, a key part to knowing what you're going to be willing to open up about or to share or not. Your ideal audience might not want to know the, about the struggle that you had in 2008 with whatever. They might not want to know that. So is that a story you want to share? So it's very much about you and who you are and why you're doing what you're doing, but also who is your audience, being really clear on who they are and what, what they're looking for from you. That's a good place to stop things. Michelle, thank you so much for this. These discussions are just a lot of fun. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Wade. I really enjoy them. If you want to reach out to Michelle, her website is 3dlifeinc.com. That's the number three. You can also follow her on Facebook as 3D Life Inc. and on LinkedIn as Michelle Hurlbert. To find out more about rural innovation and what Ignite does, check out igniteatlantic.com. You can find past episodes of Ignited there, too. If you enjoyed this episode, we'd love it if you subscribed to Ignited, shared us with your friends, and gave us a good review. And we'd love to hear from you. Any comments or suggestions about the podcast or who you'd like to hear on it are most welcome. You can send me an email at wade, W-A-D-E, at igniteatlantic.com. There's more to come next time with our Inside the Mind of an Entrepreneur series. Hopefully we'll talk to you then. I'm Wade Cleveland. Thanks for listening.